Good morning, God bless you all, and Merry Christmas to you. And we pray that the spirit of Christmas falls on you and your family. Peace and love and joy in the name of Jesus Christ. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. And I'll be repeating that another two times with Scripture. Now, I've been talking about just bits and pieces of uh, trying to give you an understanding what sin is and how it, uh, it, it becomes a barrier between yourself and God. And I just want to follow, follow up with a few other things today. You know, when we break God's laws, we are indebted to Him. The penalty of breaking His law is death. So if you sin and break the law, God pronounced a curse on humanity because of the sin of Adam because of his, his disobedience. And the Bible says that the curse of sin is death. That's why every single person, at one stage, every single person will die because of that disobedience of one man. So in, in order for you to pay for that, that sin and that debt, the penalty is you have to die. And so the penalty of breaking is his law is death. If we pay the penalty, we die, which keeps us from entering the kingdom of God. When we come to God in repentance, God permits us to claim the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. Jesus became the substitute for us. In Romans 5, 18 to... At 19 to 21 it says, Therefore, as through one man's offence, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteousness, righteous acts, that's the act of Jesus dying on the cross for you, the free gift came to all men, resulting in the justification of life. So we're, what's happened here, Jesus died, three days later he rose again from the dead, when you make Jesus your Lord and your Saviour, you can claim that and raise up to an eternal life. The, the body's going to die one day and it'll be buried, but your, your spiritual body will go back to God. And if you're in Jesus and you've made him your Lord and your Saviour, through the justification of his death, you can claim eternity in heaven. For as one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also, by one, one man's obedience, many were made righteous, so that as sin reigned in, in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And in John 16, 13 it says, However, when he, the Holy Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. So, once you do make Jesus your Lord and your Saviour, you receive the Holy Spirit. And it's called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you know, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Unless you're born of the Spirit, you won't see the gates of heaven and you will not get to heaven, get through the gates of heaven. God bless you, brother. So, you need the Holy Spirit to, to pull you through and give you victory. And in Romans 8:14 it says, For as many as are led by the Holy Spirit of God, those are the sons of God. So, whatever your belief and your and whatever the religion you're walking in, if you're not carrying the Holy Spirit, God will not recognize you as his son. You will not be the sons of God without the Holy Spirit, without making Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior. You know, in Revelation 3, 19 to 22, it says, As many as I love, I will rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Now that's a shot. God bless you, brother. You'll get charged with replacement.
Well, that's a blessing. God will touch him now. Yeah. He's got no choice. I bless that person in the name of Jesus Christ. And 20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door, I will come in. I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. So the invitation is, listen to what the Spirit is saying, open your heart, allow Jesus to come in, and make him your Lord and your Saviour. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my Father on the throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the churches, what the Spirit says to the churches. And the first step is repentance. So here's God giving you an invitation. Jesus has given you an invitation. And he's telling you, if you become an overcomer, you'll be able to sit on the throne with him as well. And in Revelation 3, 5, 6, it says, He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out the name from the Lamb's book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father, one before and before his angels. He who has an ear, hear what the Spirit says. So, in making Jesus your Lord and your Saviour, He's saying, if you'll open the door and allow him to, to, to come into your heart, he'll come and dine with you, and you with him. Then he's saying, if you be, you're an overcomer, that you'll be clothed in white garments, and your name will be entered into the Lamb's Book of Life. He won't blot you out. So he'll be there to, to testify and, and bring you into the kingdom. Now... The quickest way and the best way is to examine yourself, acknowledge that you're a sinner, and repent, ask God's forgiveness, and then make Jesus your Lord and your Saviour. And it's only then you'll receive the power of the Holy Spirit to have victory and to be an overcomer and continue in, in the walk with Jesus. So just share this prayer with me. and. Make Jesus your Lord and your Saviour now. Why hesitate? You may not have another another chance. Just share this. Open your heart. And this is between you and God. I repent of my sin. Jesus died for me. That he was crucified. He rose from the dead. Jesus, come into my heart. Receive the Holy Spirit and the love of God in the name of Jesus. Merry Christmas. God bless you.